Wedding photographers of Reddit. What is the worst moment you've captured on camera? Story 1. The wedding was on a pier. The couple and the planner kept checking the radar on their phones for rain to decide if they should do the wedding on the pier or take it inside. I looked out on the pier and said to them, I don't know what your radar says, but those are rain clouds. They make the call to do the ceremony on the pier anyway. About three minutes into the ceremony, it starts to rain. Out of nowhere, a man appears with a heart-shaped wicker box. I always ask the couple if there is anything different about the wedding I should be aware of. They never said anything to me about this, so I was caught off guard. Cool. Fine, I just keep shooting. He hands the box to the bride. She opens it up and there are two doves in there. Okay, pretty cool. I've heard of a dove release, but had never actually seen one. But their doves were not feeling it. They just sat there and were like, yeah, no, fudge this, it's the beach and it's raining. Bride looks at bird handler. Back at the birds. Shakes the box. Nothing. He motions for her to scoot them out of the box. She reaches in there and they immediately flee the box. They both fly directly into her face. I in burst mode and got a pretty wild sequence of shots. One of the birds gets caught in her weave and she shakes her head while swatting at the bird to free it. Then the bottom falls out, pouring rain and heavy winds. The efficient continues like nothing is happening. Zero sense of urgency. People are just getting up and heading inside. One of the family members gets up in the middle of the aisle and starts screaming and chanting. Just say I do. Kiss. They do and it starts raining even harder. I backpedal down the pier as they run through the rain. The shots of them running through the rain are actually pretty beautiful. The whole wedding was a complete mess. They ended up telling me that I was the only thing that went right on their wedding day and that looking at my pictures made them happy and that the pictures made the awful day look beautiful. Story 2. Speaking on behalf of an old co-worker here, we would have photo booths set up for weddings and the occasional birthday party. This co-worker was typically a wedding photo booth operator. On this particular night, someone had one set up for a sweet 16, which involved kids from various ages. After an expected long night, I remember the usually energetic and plucky co-worker named Pat walk back into the warehouse with this look of death on his face. I asked him what was wrong, and he, his response was, Do you think I'd get fired if I accidentally lost the data for tonight. Turns out that a girl around the age of 13, 14, decided to flash her chest to the camera inside the photo booth. Per company policy, we had to save every photo and had to print out extra copies in case the clients lost or requested an additional copy. My co-worker was accidentally in possession of child-prohibited photos through no fault of his own. Story 3. Maybe not the worst, but the saddest. My wife, a wedding for a bride and her father passed away later that night in his sleep of a heart attack. My wife made sure to give them all the night's photos, over 1,500 photos, and edited them all for her. Usually she only gives 350 to 450 photos for a wedding package. Anyways, really sad situation. Those photos meant the world to the bride, and she's been a return customer for years now. Super sad for the bride, though. Story 4. I filmed a guy pushing a baby carriage. The two sides of family were not fans of one another, and I was filmed a nice moment where a gentleman was making baby talk to a baby in a push carriage. The baby reached for his beer bottle, and the guy let the baby touch it. Well, the father of the kid grabbed the beer bottle and chucked it down the field, then shouted at the guy, You don't give beer to kids, so the beer guy got a mean mug and shoved the carriage a bit. I got it all on tape from about 20 feet away. He even got a cutaway of the smashed beer bottle the guy threw. Story 5 Got there way too early since I had to do some pictures of the place and some of them pre-ceremony. Met the future husband, talked to him and his bride about what I would do. The ceremony starts and everything is going nice enough. I had to be ready all the time in case they call me or something happens, so I was constantly close and scouting for them. Sometimes I would see some good moment or had some idea and I would tell them if they wanted a picture, so I'd take it. At some point the couple is no longer inside, so I go around to look for them. I spot them outside in the back of the place which was a beautiful patio with decorations and all that thing. They are just close, talking side by side with heads slightly tilted towards each other, and I think, ah, oh, yeah, this is going to be a great pick, and I try to come closer without them looking. I take the picture with my zoom, and only then they simultaneously notice me, and I notice that they have the saddest faces I've seen in a bride and groom. I ask if everything is okay, and they say yes, so I let it go. Not my place, I said, but when the party was almost over, the groom approached me, and in the middle of the conversation he says that the ceremony was so exhausting for them because they knew almost nobody there. It turns out the mother of the groom had to have a wedding for his son and orchestrated the whole thing without them knowing. 
and invited her friends and family, and then let them know that they would have to come from where they lived, which was far away, to their wedding. That was on top of the fact that the son wasn't on good terms with his mother, and the bride hated her. Apparently, the mother was very abusive and manipulative. The only person the groom knew was his brother who got very drunk as soon as the ceremony allowed him to, and the bride knew nobody. Later, looking at the photos, I noticed that when the two were together alone, they looked lovely and happy, but their warmth would slightly pass away when the mother was present in the picture. But that might be my confirmation bias. I don't know. I remember that the groom said, I probably know you more than I know most people at this party, and had me sit down eat cake and drink with him and the bride and wait out the rest of the people. I didn't send them that picture of them, although I always wondered if I should had. They were very intimate and enduring something together, and it was a very good picture outside the emotion. Edit. You guys convinced me. I'll try to get in touch with them and hopefully send them the picture. Story 6. There was this aunt of the bride or groom, not sure which, who wore a dress that I'm pretty sure was actually meant to be a long blouse. She got plastered at the reception and was dancing in the middle of a circle of people, so I peered in between two people and snapped some photos of her. Didn't realize until I'd gotten home and pulled them up on my computer that her dress was bouncing up when she jumped and exposing her wrinkly crotch. This was a wedding that I for an event company, so the way that works is that I just turn over the raw files to the company and an editor edits them and delivers the album to the client. I forgot to give them a heads up about the wrinkly crotch, but you'd think they would notice. Nope. I wound up seeing the couple's final album in the system after it had already been emailed to them, and lo and behold, Auntie Wrinkled Vag is in there. And out there. Edit. Apparently it's lo and behold. Story 7. Story from my parents' engagement party. When my parents got engaged back early 90s, my dad had some mates who were loose cannons. One of them got drunk and found somebody's camera on a table unattended, so got it, and took a photo of his cock then put the camera back. He then tells my dad about it later. My dad realizes there is only one person who is liable to leave their camera lying around like that. His soon-to-be father-in-law. A few days later, my parents go to my mum's parents' place and get there whilst my grandparents' church pastor and his wife were over. Oh, granddad just got the photos from the engagement party developed into slides. Let's look through them. My granddad was trying to get the projector working, and my dad was trying to get rid of him so he could find the slide with the dong and get rid of it. My grandma comes in and has a go at my granddad for being a bad host and to get the pastor and his wife something to drink. So my dad tells him to do that and he will take care of the slides. He finds the slide, destroys it, and everyone else is none the wiser. Story 8. Did freelance photography for a while after I graduated high school. Got hired, along with another photographer by a company to a wedding. This company instructed us to get as many candid photos as possible per the request of the client. The other photographer was female, and we split up during the preparation phase and I to the sky out with the groom and groomsmen, and she went with the bride and bridesmaids. Her session with them was largely uneventful. Mine was less so. It became clear that the groomsmen had been drinking for a while when I arrived, and that did not stop. For the groomsmen getting ready took only a few minutes, put on tuxes, boom, done. So we had a few hours to hang out while the bride got hair makeup, etc., Done. The groomsmen took full advantage of this period to get absolutely obliterated. I got a few good shots during this as the camaraderie between these guys was clear. Unfortunately, it was like a four-way enabling session as they poured each other more shots, played ill-advised drinking games, and tried to psych each other up for more of the same. Once the time for the ceremony rolled around, they could barely walk straight, and the groom was the worst off of them. I broke away from them to get my position for the ceremony and let the other photographer know what a cow show this was getting ready to be. She told me that the bride had expressed concern that the groomsmen would get too drunk before the ceremony. We both just kind of braced ourselves for what was to come. The ceremony started and the groomsmen came up the aisle in a parade of painfully obvious inebriation. The groom stumbled and almost took a knee at one point and almost completely ate cow stepping up to the little platform where they would say their vows. Then the bridesmaids came in and watching their anger and concern bloom on their faces as they took in the groomsmen standing unsteadily on the dais is hilarious in hindsight, but felt like a slow-motion train wreck in the moment. Then the bride, oh God, that poor bride, entered the church, and even through the veil you could tell she was vacillating between fury and sadness. 
She stepped up to the little platform and in the silent moment between the music fading away just before the pastor could begin speaking, one of the groomsmen ripped a horrendously loud fart. The bride's face fell. Half of the people in attendance started laughing while the other half let out a breathless, disgusted gasp. The groom barely stifled a laugh, and one of the other groomsmen turned and punched the farter in the arm. It was as if these dudes had no clue where they were or how important the event was to everyone but them, apparently. The other photographer and I did our best to get shots and just do the job we were getting paid to do. It was difficult to get any close-ups of the bride or groom as the bride settled on flipping furious for her facial expression for the remainder of the ceremony, and the groom was a drunken sod who could barely focus his eyes on his bride. She uttered her vows through gritted teeth, and he slurred through his while slowly rocking back and forth. The reception only spiraled out from there. The groom threw up on the floor before the cake cutting and was ensconced somewhere. After one of the groomsmen struck out with the bridesmaids, he set his sights on the other photographer. Eventually, our agreed-upon time ran out, and we got the fudge out of there. I handed off all of my raw files to the company that hired me and wished them luck on editing that travesty. Edits, paragraphs, and a word or two. Story 9. I borrowed a colleague's car to drive down to England the week before my wedding. On the road back, I hit a sheep at 70 miles per hour and took the front left-hand wing off the car. The opening minute of my wedding video was him walking into the churchyard shouting, My flipping car! What have you done to my flipping car? He also had a photocopy of my insurance claim. I drew a picture of a square, the car, with an arrow pointing to the front left-hand corner with the word sheep written across it. He handed copies of these out to people at his table. Story 10. After 10 years of wedding photography, the moment before the ceremony where the groom sneezed a bloody nose onto the front of the bride's beaded dress. Apparently he gets bloody noses when he gets nervous. Stopped all photos and got emergency Sprite soda cleaning done in the hotel ceremony location. Was asked to delete all photos and keep the situation from the mother of the bride. Bride was surprisingly understanding. Two hours of pre-ceremony photos short, but the blood was removed quick enough to not be noticeable for the ceremony. After review, I had a perfect mid-sneeze with blood flying out of the groom's face. Sad to see that one edited. Also tons of bouquet toss picks with balls and vags that had to be edited out in post. Lots of ladies in short dresses without undies jumping for those flowers. Story 11. I know about it that a guy that filmed a wedding I went to caught. So he's doing the whole interviewing guest routine and catches a couple and starts doing his routine at a place where he could set his gear and catch people. What he caught in the background was subtle but so freaking bad he had a door to a bathroom in the frame. And yeah, you can identify the people going in and out. Anyways, you can see the groom leave the bathroom and closing the door, and he's instantly swept up by some people. But then for about five, ten minutes more or less, the door is shut and no one goes in or out. No cuts and the people being talked to go on and on about something. Imagine the double take that some people will do when they notice the bride's younger 17-year-old sister leaves the bathroom. It took a while for people to notice, I mean, who fully watches these videos anyways. Well, someone did and it got out. Story 12. I'm not a wedding photographer, but I know one of the worst moments caught on camera. It was my parents' wedding. This is a long story, but the short version is everyone is drunk except my dad. I mean, the bridesmaids, the groomsmen, my mom, even the flipping priest is drunk. One of my parents' friends was in charge of recording the wedding, but he was also. The entire wedding was a drunk photographer zooming in on random tattoos and watching everyone else drunkenly stumble around, except for a single sober person. I heard it was an amazing video, but they lost it when I was a child. Story 13. I was filming a wedding ceremony for some friends this summer. The bride's stepfather was sitting in the front row. She had already warned me that he could be trouble, so I made a note of where he sat down before the ceremony started. He sat down in the front row and promptly fell asleep. For the whole 20-minute ceremony he slept. I was so angry on the bride's behalf. Who sits on the front row and then can't stay awake for the few minutes the ceremony lasted? I managed to avoid him in the final edit, thank God. Story 14. I am not a real wedding photographer only, but I mainly do portraits and figure photography. I was invited to a wedding once as a backup and it was a very sunny day, therefore the bride got hot in her long dress. She started fiddling because she wanted to get out of the direct sun. But the lighting was, she then slipped, knocked her shoulder right onto the concrete and her shoulder got dislocated. One of the bridemates just saw the dislocated shoulder of the bride and just passed out right onto the husband. It was very hard to suppress the laughter when you see a bride holding her shoulder and the groom having a quite corpulent lady laying on his back. Edit. Grammar. Story 15. I did a little bit of videoing for a friend's wedding once. 
Nothing super pro, just a simple little camera to film some stuff with. At the reception, I'm asked to get the camera. Realize it's still in the bride's car. Went to the car, got the camera, came back about three minutes later, and found the groom in a fist fight with his now father-in-law about five seconds before the former broke the latter's nose, and the two got separated. I never got the full story of how and why this managed to happen, though what hints I picked up afterwards were not pleasant. But I felt like Donald Glover with the pizza in his hands. Story 16. Not my wedding, but I don't understand why the bride's family insists on the photographer taking their pictures individually. Like lining up to pose and have their pictures taken at someone else's wedding just seems tacky. When my wife's cousin got married, half her pictures were of her aunts, mother and sisters all getting photos done. Obviously, she didn't select those to be printed, so they were a giant waste of time. The photographer could have been taking more pictures of the bride and groom since it was their day. Story 17. Just remembered another. Large Catholic ceremony. Groomsman had written, Help me, in bright white on the bottom of groom's shoes as a prank. When he knelt for the ceremony, the entire church could see snickers and laughs throughout somber ceremony. Bride was furious and wouldn't speak to any of them after she found out for the rest of the day. We were asked to Photoshop it out of the final album. Probably mean but also hilarious. And another, not a photo issue, but groom spilled entire pint of beer down the DJ's main bow speaker at the beginning of the reception. Music goes down with no way to continue playing. Bride immediately bursts into tears and spends the next hour in the bathroom crying. The groomsmen come to the rescue by backing a pickup truck up to the open reception doors and plugging in an iPod, pre-smartphone days. Groom was shwasted, and Bride finally came out of the restroom to finish the night. So many more stories. It was an interesting job, to say the least. Story 18. I made a throwaway account for this, as I felt I couldn't properly answer on my normal one. I have a lovely of the bridesmaids waiting outside a door. The bride locked herself in the bridal suite when she should have been walking down the aisle. She was pissed off about everything, which is fair enough. The family she was marrying into was a nightmare. Loads of shots of nip slips, underwear, accidental pencises, although I'm not sure how accidental they were. A guest clearly checking out the bride's peach as she was walking down the aisle. A very drunk bride pulling up her dress and flashing all the wedding guests on the dance floor. The worst stuff, though, is the things I haven't photographed, like being grabbed while working to rude remarks from family members and vendors. I was in a taxi with the groom and the groomsmen on the way to the wedding. The whole time, they were all commenting on the looks of women on the street. Stuff like that doesn't really photograph well. A good friend of mine and fellow wedding photographer also saw the bride making out with the best man behind the venue. He did not take that photo. I'm sure I'll update with more stuff. But I need to get ready to go a wedding. Today is Saturday after all. Story 19. Did post it here before, but we'll keep the details short a bit, mostly for privacy reason. Also, not a photographer, but someone who helped film the wedding. Was in a nice church wedding where I am in a wedding production team helping out the camcorder equipment to film the entire wedding at the time. Think 2005-ish. The entire wedding went smoothly without any issue, and the priest asked this question and out of the blue, a lady stand up and start talking. Because of where this lady sit, I was the closet camera at the area and managed to move the camera a bit to get a closer of this lady. Our team didn't know what this was about, and though it was some sort of prank from maybe the bride or groom friends which they didn't notify us ahead of time. Later, we found out this lady was actually the groom former lover from another country he was dating for a while, five, six years, and break it off the relationship quite suddenly without a trace. And somehow she managed to find out about this wedding, and literally fly to the wedding uninvited, and somehow manage to get in the church without causing any suspicious from the people of the family. For around ten minutes, this lady talked about the groom and their relationship between them during the time both was in the country she was from, and the how the groom just left her, and literally tie between without any explanation, and how it literally destroy her during the time in need. And she just want to warn the bride about the groom dark past, so she don't have to go through the same pain she have to go through. During this time, it was death quiet as the guest didn't even say anything. And you can see the groom was sweating and turning in red on the face. As for the bride, she'd taken quite well for someone who have to hear all this dark stuff of her future husband, and also for someone who kind of crashed her wedding. When the lady finished her talk, the priest was fluster and shock of what just happened. And the bride thanked her of telling her about this. And even with the info, she will still stay with her husband, but want to be friend with the lady and try to help her if she need any help from what happened in the past.
Won't discuss much about the wedding video, but will say we have a very interesting discussion with the bride and groom parent of what to do with that of the lady talking. As for the bride and groom, the last update I have long ago is the bride is keeping a tight leech on her husband just to be sure he didn't do anything naughty while keep in touch with his ex-lover. Story 20 I used to be a videographer that worked with a photographer. We did weddings and parties and various other events. We once a wedding where the bride and groom seemed forced to be together. 300-pound obnoxious fat slob of a man with a very pretty woman. He was absolutely wasted right from the beginning of the reception, and she didn't look like she wanted to be there at all. The groom paid no attention to her the entire night and proceeded to make her and her family look terrible. It truly looked like the kind of situation where he could do anything, and she was forced to follow him. It was so sad. The wedding reception was at a huge, expensive country club, so I know that one of them was probably very wealthy, and by how entitled him and his family acted all night, I can tell it was probably the groom. Story 21 It was last August. The day was really sunny and hot, and I think the bride didn't eat or drink for several hours because she was nervous. The ceremony was outdoors, and after it was finished, I was going to take a picture of the couple with all the guests standing in front of the wedding arch. So, people are gathering around the couple. There are 80 guests, so it takes some time to make sure that everyone is going to be visible in the picture. And finally, when everything is perfect, as I say, now everyone look in the camera and smile. The bride closes her eyes and collapses. The groom caught her right before she fell on the ground. It was so hot that day and she was probably dehydrated, so she fainted. And I captured that moment in my picture. Story 22. My brother is a videographer who used to do weddings when he first started out. He once showed me a video of a bridesmaid falling down an entire long flight of stairs. The reception was at a classy hotel, and they were introducing the bridal party in this lobby that had a beautiful staircase as the focal point. So not only were all of the guests there watching, but a ton of random people too. When she took her first step, the heel on her shoe went inward instead of straight up and down, sending her head first down like 20 steps, at the bottom of which she actually landed on her feet before sluggishly making her way off camera. On the video, you can hear the father of the groom tell my brother, that bad person was top-heavy, and start laughing hysterically. Oh, and she wasn't wearing underwear. Story 23. A family story that doesn't work written down goes, This was when filming weddings were new and exciting, but not completely unstood. In this wedding, everything was going well, except up to the point where someone sitting next to the camera whispered to the cameraman, Doesn't she, the bride look a bugger in that hat. Important to note two things. One, the accent this was said in made bugger and hat rhyme too. This was right next to the mic and the video and audio was watched by the whole wedding after the ceremony. Story 24. I was second shooting a wedding with another photog. I got groomsman duty. Showed up at the house where my dudes were getting dressed. The groom is in the bathroom putting the finishing touches on. As a photographer, you always hope for pretty people, hoping for something great to add to your portfolio. The gorgeous bride with a perfect smile, or that handsome West Point guy with the perfect jawline and the sharp uniform, whatever. I raise my camera to my eye as I hear him coming out of the bathroom. He steps out and his hands down, the most remarkably ugly human I've ever seen. Monobrow, bad teeth, one eye that perpetually points at his nose, very asymmetrical face. He was so oh no ugly that I visibly startled, like completely missed the startled. I recovered quickly and ended up getting a few good shots of the guy but the memory of that troll stepping out of the bathroom will haunt me forever. I've had plenty of other bad things happen. Barfing brides, drunk grooms, fist fights, accidental nudity, etc. But that one sticks in my mind the most. Story 25. Not what the OP asked for, but here goes, Mr. Blobby. Remember him? If you have no idea who I'm talking about, I'll add a googled link to it. My brother's wedding reception? It was all an expensive example of how my sister-in-law likes things. One-up manship. Okay. They start the first dance with the hired videographer filming the entire thing, and in comes Mr. Blobby mid-dance, falls over and nearly wipes out the wedding cake, grabs my sister and our sister-in-law's stepbrother and gets them dancing too. Me and my sister-in-law's sister, my girlfriend and another stepbrother, generally falling over, hitting people and being a banana. My sister-in-law's now in tears as the first dance is ruined. Mr. Blobby leaves, now my brother plays rugby. So some of the guests are a bit on the large side. Some of them exit after Blobby, as do I. Mr. Blobby is a friend of my brother's called Jeff, and some of the rugby lads have Jeff pinned up against the wall in the foyer. I go out and tell them to let Jeff go, which they do. See, someone found it fun. At that point, I punched Jeff in face and broke his nose. 
Get changed and get the fudge out. Jeff's wife has now joined us to defend what has happened as a bit of fun. No one else thinks it's funny. They both leave and my brother comes out to have a word with Jeff. Already did that and broke his nose. Turns out after my brother started to speak to Jeff again, after Jeff divorced his wife years later, and it was all her idea as she didn't want them to have a wedding that was bigger than hers. Bad person? Videographer deleted the footage of it there and then.